watched science fiction movies. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, man. It's laid down by me, your boy Seed, the host. Most of the stuff right here on the Pop Riga Network, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully your, your year is going by well. We've had some wild shit happen already this year. Motherfuckers is getting slapped at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy all sorts of stuff happening man meanwhile we keep chugging right along with this list of sci-fi movies man 100 of them but i think 100 best science fiction movies ranked them from 100 to 1 uh you know and we've just been doing one a day <clears throat> for the first 100 days of the year yesterday we talked about the empire strikes back we are all done with star trek we are all done with star wars now um, from here on out, it's just dopeness. <laughs> Our last trek was uh back at 22. Our last Star Wars was yesterday. We talked about Empire Strikes Batman. Um, apparently, hell exists in the Star Wars universe. As Han Solo yells, I'll see you in hell to someone. It's uh, it's talk about a whole tonal shift. <laughs> um, the, the, the running gag of the Falcon not working, the Falcon, along with Han Solo being my favorite fictional character of all time, the Falcon, as far as spaceship goes, uh, that's my favorite fictional spaceship, uh, spaceship of all time. The running gag of it just constantly breaking down and never being reliable. I love that about it. it it's just, you don't, is it going to work this time? And as a kid, you're just on the seat of your pants. Like they're going through the motions. He's going to pull that lever. Is something going to happen? Nope. Nope. Sure. It didn't. Uh, but our boy R2D2 with his delusions of grandeur and everything show up to save the day. God, there's so many high highs and low lows. My boys encased in carbonite, man. Uh, job of the hut finally gets his due. Go back and check out Empire Strikes Back. It's been a while. We're we're in April, man. We're a couple of we're a month and some change away from both Star Wars Celebration and May twenty fifth or May fourth. If you want to do the whole May the fourth with you, go ahead and check out some Star Wars. Get in your life, man. You got what the, like the nine, ten, eleven options. You got eleven options of Star Wars movies to watch, man. Make Empire Strikes Back one of them today. Today we're talking about number four on this list: The Matrix. Mm. What was for? Almost 20 years-ish. My favorite movie of all time. Let's check out this tagline. Welcome to the real world. I'll give that a B. Straight B. Set in the 22nd century, The Matrix tells the story of a computer hacker who joins a group of underground insurgents fighting the vast and powerful computers who now rule the Earth. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, listen, The Matrix broke every barrier imaginable. You got the Wachowskis just out there putting their heart and their soul into this movie. The visuals. I think what Bill Pope was cinematographer for this joint. Shot the fuck out of this movie, man. It is a beautiful movie to watch. The number of different ideas that run through this of, of religion and philosophy. And and you know existentialism and just the themes of identity that run through it and in self discovery and being true to oneself and self acceptance of course this is made by two trans directors all the blueprints are laid out right there for you people but the thing that's great about the Matrix is it works if you just want some popcorn to throw in your fucking face. While you're watching the movie, or if you really want to dial in and look at those deeper themes, it works on multiple levels for different uh, demographics of entertainment. Let's say it could be just an action pew pew movie, and it can be some weighty, thoughtful science fiction as well. Uh, going up against the establishment, this is a punk rock sci-fi movie. I don't care what nobody says. This is a punk rock. They're sticking it to the man in this movie. The man in this case being Hugo Weaving's Agent Smith. Um, so many good scenes in here, man. It's the, the, the open when you open up with the whole Trinity business and the the rooftop chase and her jumping from rooftop to rooftop across streets. And we are that cop in that instance. No way. Um, jumping through the window, man. And she runs to the phone, and all of a sudden, Smith Smith shows up there with the with the bulldozer or whatever. And she and the phone starts ringing. And you're like, "Bitch, this ain't the time to be answering the phone." <laughs> it's, it's you're just thrown in 
And you're like, what the, f- what's going on in this movie? But that opening action scene is so damn good. She's running up walls. She's breaking the 180 rule degree. Uh, so much going on that's dope. You are immediately sucked in. And then it all kind of resets and gives you a, uh, a refresher, a breather, and introduces you to Thomas Anderson and this dude's shitty life. And what's going on with him, man? Uh, ugh, it's so much stuff. And then through Thomas Anderson, we as the audience find out what all's going on. This is not the real world. This is a computer simulation. And they're trying to break free of the computer simulation and free all of the minds on Earth. Mm, 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 mm. This movie is is just absolutely amazing. This is one of the movies that movies that made me love movies, man. Uh, again, I got to shout out Ghost in the Shell. I think I talked about it on the Ghost in the Shell episode. Without this, you don't get the Matrix. They when they pitched to Warner Brothers, they showed them Ghost in the Shell and said, "We want to do this but live action." Um, and this is much better than the live action Ghost in the Shell, although that is also a beautiful movie at times. That that oh. This movie is so great. You know what it is. We know what it is. It was part of the cultural zeitgeist forever. We all had the wallpapers, like the dusters and the long coats made a comeback. Um, This hit kind of right when DVDs hit. So you just popped it in and go straight to the... uh, to the big action scene between Neo and Trinity and, you know, all those government agents on the on the first floor. Doom, 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 doom. Like, you could just, you don't have to fast forward. You can just scene selection, skip, 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 boom. There it is. You can just watch the, uh, watch the action unfold. Uh, Morpheus as, like, the Obi-Wan Kenobi of this shit, as the wise leader. I think this is one of Fishburne's best roles, man, because he plays that so perfectly. Um, big man's got moves. Morpheus is fighting Neo. So much good about this movie, man. Um, The Matrix, you know what it is. We'll be back 24 of the hours to talk about the top three science fiction movies of all time right here on Paprika. <laughs>